All right, so it's once again that time of the year when Shopify announces brand new features to the Shopify platform. And this year's winter edition is chock full of exciting new updates. But before we get too excited, I need to warn you that most of them aren't ready to go live just yet. In this video, what we're gonna do is take a first look at the updates coming up that concern us most as Shopify theme developers. But before we begin, just a quick reminder for those wanting to learn Shopify Liquid, the first module on shopifythemedeveloper.com is now live. Just head to shopifythemedeveloper.com slash shopify dash liquid to learn more. And with that out of the way, let's get stuck into the updates. Number one, reusable and nested theme blocks. This exciting new feature relates directly to the online store sales channel and theme development as, like sections, blocks are about to become modular files stored within their own folder within the theme. So let's have a quick look at the reference theme for this feature. We can find the reference theme here at github.com slash Shopify slash reference dash theme. And we can click on this green button right here to copy the HTTP address of the repository to clone using git clone. So I'm going to copy that, open up a terminal, navigate to where I want to create this uh, theme directory. I'm going to run make dia and let's call it reference theme. Then I'm going to navigate into reference theme. And now I'm going to run git clone followed by the address. Hit enter on that and it's going to create that for me. Now I'll open up my code editor and open that folder. And let's take a quick look at the theme. The biggest difference that you'll be able to pick up on or should be able to pick up on straight away is that we have a new folder, the folder for blocks. So if we go into our blocks folder, we can see that we've got reusable code for all of these blocks. So here you can see it's just HTML and CSS with liquid code and interestingly, a schema. So we've got the same sort of schema that we had with sections and it looks actually exactly the same as a section schema, which kind of makes sense. There's probably a few differences here that we'll go deeper into once this feature goes live. But for now, we have reusable blocks, just like we have reusable sections. So you'll see it looks very similar. And you can see here in this reference theme that there are a lot more block files than there are section files. So what is happening here or what Shopify seems to be encouraging here is that we break up our sections into even more modular files here and that allows us to be even more flexible with our front end designs. But now that we've got these reusable blocks in a blocks folder, how does that affect our reference to them within sections? So if we go over here to custom sections, let's have a look at the schema. Let's have a look at our blocks array here. And what's interesting is instead of defining the blocks here, we're just including an object with type at theme. You probably have seen this one before type at app. This is for bringing in app blocks, but now we have this to bring in theme blocks. And so this is kind of like a dynamic entry point, it seems, to bring in blocks in our blocks folder, just like this one is a dynamic entry point for apps to bring in app blocks. And if I look below the section settings, you can still, we still have presets here. So we can still define preset blocks on here, which is interesting. And the type here, I believe, relates to the actual name. So just like in our template files, where if we go into a JSON schema here, you'll see type relates to the file name. So image dash banner, there should be an image dash banner dot liquid in sections, which there is. It's a similar concept, it seems, with sections now. In our types here, we are referencing a file in our blocks folder rather than a type that we've set up right here within this schema. So this makes a lot of sense. It's basically the same pattern as we had before, but just extended down to blocks. And if we were to store this information, let's have a look at how it's stored. So let's have a look at index.json and let's look at image banner. So we've got this image banner section first. That's referencing, as I mentioned before, the section file in our sections folder. And then you can see here, we've got a block of type group. 
and that type is referencing a file name within the blocks folder. And then if we go within this group, actually I wanna open these side by side and then I'll open index here so you can see the schema combined with the actual JSON. I'll double click on these so they stick. And as you can see, we saw before image banner was a section file in our sections folder. And we can see clearly that group is a file in our blocks folder. And then here we have settings, direction, justify content, color scheme, width and padding. If we look down in our schema for this block, we should be able to see all of those as IDs. So we've got direction, justify content, color scheme, width and padding. How cool. This is the first time I'm looking at it and it's just so intuitive that I was able to find this information straight up. So I think this is gonna be a really cool, exciting feature that is not gonna to be too hard to learn if you already know how to do sections. It's a similar concept as I just mentioned. It's a similar pattern. It's just extending it to blocks. And now that I'm seeing this in action, it really makes sense and I wonder why this wasn't implemented earlier but at least we are moving in the right direction with having more modular front ends on the Shopify online store sales channel. As you can see from diving into the reference theme code, this is going to be quite similar to what we're used to with Shopify sections, but unfortunately you won't be able to roll this out just yet to your Shopify store. As my language throughout this video would suggest, these features are all coming soon. So when they will be released by Shopify, it's not super clear. But for now, if you do wanna play around with it and test it out yourself, you can do so by creating a developer preview store through your partner's account. Here's a quick run through on how to do that. All right, so within my Shopify partner's account, I'm on the stores page. And in the top right hand corner, I can see this button for add store. So I'm gonna click that and then click create development store. This is not for a client, this is to test and build. So I'm gonna select that option. And here I can put in my store name. I'm going to try and see if this one is available, winter editions 24, and it looks like it is available. That surely won't be the case very soon, but looks like I'm in early enough. Now here you can see the build version and this is where we need to select developer preview because the features that we're gonna be looking at are in developer preview. And then I'll click here and what do I want to test? Theme blocks, okay? And then I will start with test data, why not? And then I will create the development store. Actually, I think we can only test one feature at a time. So I'm gonna name this theme blocks preview instead. Let's see if that's okay. That's not available, which makes sense. 24 theme blocks preview 24 preview winter 24. That one should definitely be available. Okay, so this is my development store to test out this specific new feature that's coming soon. So I'll click create development store. And after about 20 to 30 seconds, you can see my store has now been created and we can go into online store now. Let's see if the reference theme is already installed. Looks like it's the standard test data theme. Let's confirm that right now. If I go in here and yeah, it doesn't look like I can nest blocks. And if I go into the code to check, there is a blocks folder. Okay, so that's good. But I think we're going to need to install the reference theme still. So what I'm gonna do is download the reference theme. Here you can see that we've got a blocks folder in here and you've got some blocks already made. So this is the theme that Shopify has created. They have put this on their GitHub account for us to install on our theme so we can see this functionality. So I'll click on here and I'll download the zip. Now that that theme has downloaded, we can upload it here by clicking add theme, upload zip file, click add file, navigate to where that theme file is and click upload file. When that has finished installing, we're going to hit publish on it. So there you can see just added, I'm gonna hit publish, hit publish again. Now let's have a look at our reference theme in the theme editor. All right, so here you can see just like we can add sections down the bottom. So if I close down these, there's a lot of sections here. 
But if I scroll down, you can see we can add section. There's an option for add block as well at different levels. So blocks are gonna work a lot like sections since sections everywhere came out a few years ago. Okay, so let me go into image banner up here. As you can see here, we've got our first level block, which is a group. And then we've got our blocks within that. So if I move this around, you can see this happening live. And then if I click add block, I can take one of the blocks that I've defined in my theme and put it in. So you can see here that there's layout elements like collapsible rows, columns, groups, which is interesting. That'll be an interesting concept to explore in a later video. But here we can see, let's just put in an image, let's say, let's select an image. Here we've got some sample data because we selected sample data to be populated when we created the development store. And then now I can take that image, rearrange it like we used to be able to do. But the cool thing is now I can add a first level block to this section as well. Let me add another group and see what happens there. And then within this group, I can add multiple blocks to create this secondary block. So this second block here and this first block here, both of them can be made up of other blocks. So this is the nesting right here. So you, here you can see we've got the first group and the width is 50%. So I think we need to, in order to get these together is just reduce this one down to 50% as well. Okay, maybe because of padding, it's not aligning next to it. Okay, we'll just reduce it a little bit. So let's just say 49, 49. Let's see if that's, there we go. If we just make them both 49, then they'll be next to each other on this particular screen size. And then as you can see, I can construct more here. So let me just add in some random text. And I think you guys get the point here. This is a lot more expandable than what we had in the past with just sections being rearranged and only having one set of blocks within each section. This is gonna be a game changer for the online store sales channel and theme development. And I am looking forward to working with this when it comes out. So as you can see, this is going to be an absolute game changer when it comes out. The only disappointing thing about this announcement is that we just don't know when this feature will actually be released. Number two, combined listings. Seeing this solution being announced is kind of bittersweet for me because I see the problem that combined listings is trying to solve all the time when working with clients and would love to see the solution available right now. What is it? Well, according to Shopify, there's going to be an app that allows merchants to group together certain similar products, the kind of products that only vary by a small detail like color. Merchants will often create multiple products of the same product that vary only in color because they'd like to showcase multiple photos for each color. But the problem then becomes, how do we link these products together and this is where developers like myself have used hack solutions like implementing what I call product sets on the back end with heavy theme modifications in order to group together similar products within a product grid or give the customer the option to change their color selection on the product page. Combined listings will hopefully solve this issue by providing a native way to link products together into a set. The sad news again is that the combined listing app is not available and when it is, it's only going to be available to Shopify plus merchants. Plus between you and me, I'm doubtful whether this app will actually solve the issue since the last native app that was announced by Shopify fell well short of what many merchants needed it for. Number three, customer accounts extensibility. This one is interesting because I kind of feel like it's been sliding under the radar. As someone who's been working with the Shopify platform since 2019, the customer section has always been managed by the following templates within the theme. But recently I started to see the words classic customer accounts show up in Shopify documentation, suggesting that there was a different and newer way of doing accounts. And I guess now, this is it. If you're familiar with what has been happening to Shopify checkout over the last year, then you can think of what's happening here as basically the same thing. As some of you might remember, there was a time when Shopify merchants could customize the checkout page via a layout file in the theme folder. But then Shopify moved to what they call checkout extensibility, where checkout customizations are now delivered via the brand new API with a specific component library. And now the same process appears to be happening with the customer section. As we can see from the following table, 
The classic customer accounts are the ones that can be customized using Liquid. New customer accounts, on the other hand, won't be. Instead, the customer account section will be constructed and rendered via various APIs and components, just like we recently saw with checkout extensibility. This feature is also in developer preview, but it's a bit more complicated to explain than theme blocks that of course use the same patterns you're used to in theme development. So I'll save a demo on this topic for a future video. Number four, updated product taxonomy. This one is interesting. As we can see in the Shopify demo, the platform is soon to infer a category for the product and insert certain meta fields to the product that are relevant for a product of that category. It can also infer the option values for certain fields based on product images. In the dedicated demo video, you might also notice that Agatha is able to click onto one of these colors to expand more options within it. And if you have a keen eye, you might notice the words meta object and entry, suggesting that each of these colors are now their own meta object entries. So will following this pattern automatically create a meta object definition for color in your store? And after these colors automatically populate, will you then be able to locate these entries in the meta object section of your store admin? It's not quite clear yet, but what's even more fascinating is what is shown next. As Agatha demos here, when you create a new option parameter in your variant section, you'll have the option to create it based on one of these pre-populated meta fields. And if the color option is selected, the two meta objects that were created earlier will appear in that option parameter. So does this mean that option values can now be meta objects? From the video, it seems they might be. Then you'll see some nice little UX features here. Instead of having to type your option values in, you'll be able to select them from a predetermined list as well as add your own, presumably, as she didn't click that button in the video, but you would think so, of course. And variants will be grouped together by certain option parameters, presumably the first option parameter, as is the case in the demo video. And obviously I'm making a few presumptions here as this feature is not yet released or available as a developer preview. So all we have to go off right now is the demo video. So I'm afraid to discover more about how this feature will work. We will just have to check out the admin once they finally release the feature and test it out for ourselves. Honorable mentions. The previous four I talked about, I think are going to be the most consequential for theme developers once they're released, but I wanted to briefly mention a few others here before we wrap up. Firstly, check out extensibility. This feature came out about a year ago, but in this edition, Shopify announced some updates. I think previously customizing the thank you page was a bit limited or impossible, but now we have that same level of customization as on the main checkout page. Secondly, improved page speed metrics. According to Shopify, this will be rolled out over the next few weeks and improve upon the previous system by focusing on core web vitals, which I think should encourage better practices from merchants. So I'm happy to see this change. And thirdly, the product variant limit will be increased to 2000. I can imagine this current variant limit would be a huge pain in the butt for a lot of merchants that actually need it. But if you listen closely to the video, it could be a year before the increased limit reaches your store. So I wouldn't be holding your breath just yet. Obviously, there's a ton of other updates that you can find on the Winter Editions 2024 landing page. But for now, what I've covered in this video is what I believe should be most concerning to theme developers coming up. Like I said, there are a lot of features here that are still in developer preview or soon to be released at an indefinite date in the future. So there's no real action to take here quite yet unless you want to play with developer previews. But stay tuned to the channel for when these new features do go live for deeper tutorials into each topic. And if you haven't already, check out shopifythemedeveloper.com, the ultimate resource for learning how to become a Shopify theme developer or just picking up a few extra skills in Shopify web development. Until next time, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you on the next one.